So this is how then government is immoral. This organization that calls itself the government then only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. So I guess my question to you, would you say that it is better to not have a government or to have a government that is somewhat immoral on some grounds and try and change it? No government. No government You don't need anyone to tell you what you can and cannot do with your body, what you can and cannot do with your property, with your land, with your money, with your clothes, with your car. No one should have that authority. Bang. Right? Mine. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's what government a, does. Well, and that's what everyone else would do, too, if there was no government, though. Because, like, if you don't have some sort of structure... You think they provide security? I think that the idea provides security. Whether they actually do provide security or not, I think is arguable on a case-by-case -case basis. And I think it is also very stigmatized towards providing security for certain people, certain ethnic backgrounds over other people. But I think the idea of government as a whole prevents a lot of violence and prevents a lot of initiations of violence just because in their mind, it's kind of like the Bible or any religious text as well. It's just the idea of it can be enough for some people to not do something as opposed to for me to just stab you, think you and that, take your uh, things. People don't do bad because they're afraid of what government will do to them? I think some people. I don't think that's the way it should be, but you I do think because that. Because when I ask you if in your day-to-day -day life you don't use violence, not because a stranger in a blue costume tells you that you shouldn't do it because here's the consequences. You do it because you think that's wrong or immoral, do, right? Um, we can't make hasty generalizations of what other people may think of until we talk to them. I right? agree with that. Um, and I will find then in which government, though, it says we're here to protect or keep you safe, uh, to prevent other people from initiating force, but in the description of what is government, government must initiate force to begin with. If, like, for example, the police must first rob you of your property through taxation in order to say we're here to protect your property, right? True. So before government can say we're here to do good, they must first necessarily do evil. But on the other hand of that as well, you use the term that said they rob you of your money to protect you, but in another person's case, they could be viewing it as a donation then it, to protect. Sure, and uh, if it was a donation, they would not be threatened to be sent into a cage if they did not surrender that donation. If there's no threat of coercion, there's no cage, if there's no one being pointed at gunpoint to surrender the property, then that will be called charity. That will be called a subscription plan. That would be called sure. like any other thing uh, that people voluntarily give out of their goodwill and nature, just like any other thing. When there's a gun pointing at them, that's no longer called charity. But I also think that the reason that came about was due to the fact of the idea that I was speaking of earlier that some people will choose to take and some people will choose to give and that idea of government may not be the best one it's the best idea we have so far but as a whole it kind of makes it so that there is a standard for giving and taking now I don't think we've perfected that standard yet and I think there is a lot of work to be done things like taxes, things like cannabis, anything like that. But in the end, without government, I think that the whole world would just turn to absolute crap. I Don't you think it's already crap when millions and millions of people are suffering in cages for victimless crimes because of government? Is There's that not crap? People suffering is this not already starvation? crap? Or is, yeah. Uh, look at places in Flint where the government is poisoning people's water. Right. Yeah. Look at all the people that Obama has drone bombed overseas, families and children, peaceful people. Right. Is that not do we not already have crap because of government? Right. Yeah, Look, I will agree with you on that. So we things do are already stuff like that. So things are already in disorder. Things are already in chaos. Things are already are crap. Now, when in terms of when we remove government, I'm not saying we won't have rules. We won't have security. We won't have any of the stuff that government has monopolized. So that's what that government is when we touch base to it. Government has a violent monopoly on the things you and I want. I want rules. I want security. I want uh, alcohol. ABC has a monopoly in distilled spirits, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so they have a monopoly in which you don't have the economic freedom to cancel and subscribe as you would from a real business service or compete in order to say, I can provide you a better service of security. I can provide you a better service of arbitration, which when you stand up, when you come into my courtroom, I stand up because you're paying my salary, not the other way around, right? Yeah. Uh, 
So that's not going to be abusive or harmful to you, the consumer. Removing government, we can now have these goods and a market competition of anyone saying, I could provide a better look at my rating system. I've been in the business for 20 years. Look at my feedback review. Consumer reports rated me five stars out of five stars. Um, but that's voluntary. That's consensual. That's uh, market selection in which you can choose that matches your preferences best instead of having the whole deal packaged force onto mm -hmm. you that you don't, maybe don't need the whole thing. Yeah. So I guess then my question to you is then medieval times when people that were physically strong, when people had capabilities to force people under their wills with knights, kings, knighthoods where you had multiple people in uh, camaraderie being able to do whatever they felt like they could do, do you think that would spawn from this idea of no government because there would be people that would be physically stronger, intelligently better, and those people would band together, creating a government on their own, thus kind of defeating the purpose of this free society? I guess the thing with uh, the stuff that happened back then and even today, for government to kind of work, you need to indoctrinate the kids, the children, right? Mm -hmm. That's why you send them to 12 years and thousands of hours into government indoctrination camps, so they, they come out they believe that you need government or also be a boogeyman out there that'll hurt you. Uh, you'll have government pictures of all the presidents, you'll have government history. You'll never hear about the other side of how the market provided all these stuff, voluntary and consensual. They don't need competition with that. So like even in feudal times, they're taught that you need a slave master, that uh, they are, I am your subordinate. These people were born with superior qualities, that these people must be above me because they call themselves nobles. Same thing with politicians. Politicians can tell you what you can, can I do with your body and property, but you can't tell them the same thing, right? If you were to assault someone or kidnap someone, that's what they'll call it. But when a cop does it, it's not the same thing. Government says it's wrong for you to steal, we'll call it taxes. Wrong for you to murder, we'll call it organized war, right? Mm -hmm. They have to call it by a different name, and the only way then government, the idea can exist, is to indoctrinate the children into growing up into that belief. And it's difficult then for them to see what the real world looks like outside of that. Yeah, I think the dichotomy there is kind of pitiful as far as our government goes and as far as the enforcement of these ideas and these laws and I think even the laws and the ideas themselves are not what they should be but I'll give people the benefit of the doubt saying that it was a valiant effort to begin with there at the go. very least. There we go, we but, can say that, right? I, I nice think try. the, the way Lisa. it's kind of come to as of right now, I think we've come a little too far to not just take a step back and be like, hold on, we need to backtrack here. We, I, I don't think getting rid of it in general is a good way to go. I see where you're coming from, and I do agree that we need to have a change of perspective, and I, I definitely... I'm with you 100% on that with educating our children. Like people in France, they learn about recycling every year of their lives. I had no recycling training growing up. Just something as simple as that can change the environment as a whole. That could have a huge impact. So little things like that that I think that, and I'm speaking from an American perspective because I don't know anything as far as other countries' diplomacy goes, but little things can go a very, very long way, and I think that's more the approach to take as opposed to saying we just need to get rid of everything see what happens and say no well let me ask a question then in terms of chattel slavery in the 1800s would you not want to have abolished slavery immediately or do you say well these people have been slaves all their lives i don't know how they're going to function what they're going to do with themselves they don't have uh, the kind of skills necessary so they still continue to be chained for a long duration until we figure it out. Or do you say, no, let us break these bonds and free people, no one, to rule over another. No one to be slave to another. I think we should break the bonds, but I also think we should educate them. Absolutely, and we work towards that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the group I'm with, Liberate RBA, non-political organization, and we want to work in towards growing this community here in, in Richmond until that time. As we grow over the number of years, our tribe continues to grow. The education and children that are already involved continues to grow with this information that we already have make them stronger and uh, steadfast against uh, people who try to corrupt them and hurt them, like government. So what public education stuff do you do? Uh, in terms of that, economics, a lot of economics education that we do, in terms of, uh, you know, study of economics is a study of human behavior, human actions, and the effects of that really? occurs towards uh, interactions of others. 
So um, do you do like community outreach programs where you give people economic training, you give people yes. like political training? You say, I, I guess you could say anti-political. Anti, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it is like in the end. Philosophy. We, we talk about all kinds of stuff. Uh, in terms of uh, self-sustainability, firearm, firearm training, uh, yeah. everything. Awesome. That's yeah. cool. I'm glad to see like grassroots movements like this doing something. Yeah. I may differ with you as far as the end goal in mind, but I think what you're doing can only help. Right. I mean, uh, you value consent, right? Mm -hmm. That's the most ultimate thing, I guess, that we could value in terms of our interactions with another. Um, and right now, we already have this kind of consent, right? Right now, we already kind of have uh, what I would call anarchy, mm -hmm. right? Anarchy means without political rulers, without strangers telling you what you can and cannot do with your life, your body, or your property. Mm -hmm. uh, wherever there is otherwise, that's called government, statism. Yeah. All right? And that's the stuff that violates consent, that is cohesive in nature, stuff that we don't want at all in our lives or in our interpersonal relationships with others. Uh, and that's the thing that we kind of very much have to kind of go up against. And kind of takes does takes courage to go against that grain and recognize and call it out for what it is. Yeah, I think I've been, I think my biggest thing with what you're saying is that for a collective human species, I don't think we'll ever get everybody on the same page. So the only solution I've ever seen that's come forth to me thus far in my experiences has been there needs to be a standard of help that's given, whether that's help to protect people, help to fund certain things, help to just make it so that people can eat on a day-to-day -day basis. There needs to be some sort of organization to help with those things, and the best way I've seen that happen deals mainly with almost like a socialist kind of concept of, okay, well, if everyone gives this or everyone does this, then those people that can't get this or can't do this, they have a better chance of being able to do this and have the same opportunities as these other people. But we want to examine, though, why could they not have done that as well? I mean, you pointed out in history to see why they could not. You always find in government involvement into their lives, preventing them from doing so. For example, before 1960s, before Medicare, Medicaid, and the welfare programs, the market all these communities provided this stuff voluntarily. You had unemployment insurance, you had health insurance, you had all these different types of ways that we can help each other bounce off for poverty, but the last thing the government wanted is that kind of independence, Yeah. right? So they destroyed all that, all across the United States, all across uh, Europe as well, and England particularly. And then they put their own program, which only continues to exacerbate the problem. You can't go anywhere else. You can't seek anywhere else because it's criminal for anyone to kind of compete against that sort of stuff. Yeah. And you're forced to pay for that stuff. Um, if you want to help the poor, you don't rob them through taxation. When they get their paycheck, you know, $150 goes to uh, Uncle Sam uh, that you can't uh, divorce yourself from, that you can't yeah. uh, escape from. You know, who should you say that, that that's not important to a people who are already on a tight budget to begin with, mm -hmm. right? So I want to help people as well. I want these organizations. That's something that we are looking forward to creating. Like in the old times, these mutual aid societies to have this insurance program to help each other in case one of us falls down on accident. We can just bounce it back right up. Um, I think that starts with educating our children. Yeah, absolutely. But I got to get going. Yeah, Cal. pleasure, pleasure. It was yeah. a good talk, man. You too, I'll you send too. people your way here soon. Awesome. Let me give you a flyer. Awesome. Yeah, hit us up, man. we Will do. I'll see what's going on, but... Live, love, liberate, my man. Love it. <laughs> Take it easy, man. Many thanks to Joe Moulton for sponsoring this video and helping me be the best there is at what I do at spreading anarchy. And for those that also want to help in the campaign to abolish tyranny to uh, answer the question of what would Lysander Spooner do, check out the Patron site uh, in the link below and the next uh, image that will follow after this. And so, again, thank you so much, everyone, for your support and help. And with that, see you guys at the Victory Party and stay liberated.
face bruised and battered, eyes reflect agony of dreams that were shattered and never mattered to the so-called general public about my nation's situation and how we rise above it and they love it when we self-destruct and kill a home and the greater responsibility, yes, it's still our home. We should know by now that the system's designed for our demise. If we ain't wise, we'll be left behind. The dollar signs rule, but what about the fool who falls victim to the material world?